density. Density has a mathematical definition as an equation. Density is the mass divided by the volume. Or we can say it's the ratio of the mass to the volume. It's a measure of how heavy something is relative to its size. There's an old joke, which weighs more, a pound of feathers or a pound of bricks? They both weigh the same. They weigh a pound. Why does that mess us up? Because we know that a pound of feathers would be really big and fluffy and be a lot bigger than a pound of bricks. I think one brick probably weighs more than a pound. But a pound of feathers is a lot of feathers. The difference is that they have different densities. So even though the pound of bricks and the pound of feathers have the same mass, they're going to have different volumes. So um, density, you can think of it as how heavy something is relative to its size. And this has to do with whether things will float or sink in water. A piece of wood generally will float in water because it is less dense. It doesn't float because it weighs less than the water. If you put it in a bathtub of water, you know, a chunk of wood, the water in the bathtub weighs more. Okay, backwards. I did this this morning too. It doesn't float because it weighs more. It doesn't float because it weighs less either. Um, yeah, and see, then the whole analogy just went down the bathtub drain. Um, something doesn't float because it weighs less. It, it floats because it is less dense. If you cut something in half, it weighs half as much. Its density is the same. Okay, so that's something that they should have taught you in, in your previous educational experience. And maybe they did, hopefully they did, maybe they didn't. So we will be, we'll be doing some more things with density. I think maybe, I don't know, someday in lab we're going to do density stuff. Um, but density is the relative mass, mass relative to its volume. And, you know, we experience, um, we sometimes have surprising experiences because you go to pick something up. And it's much lighter than you expected it to be, or it's much heavier than you expected. You looked at its volume, and you had kind of an idea of how heavy it was going to be. My kids are like that. I don't know what's in their bones, if it's lead or mercury or something. They're dense. They're just solid. They're not fat. They're not ginormous, but they're heavy. Okay? And so, you know, somebody goes to pick up one of mine when they're like three or something, and they go, oh, you know, because he already weighs 40 pounds. And then we've got friends who's, you know, their kids are seven and they're still weighing 40 pounds. And I go to pick up somebody else's child and I almost throw them up in the air because they're so light, right? They look like they're the same size. But my kids are really dense. I'm not sure why, but they are. They're very solid. They're very sturdy. And then when they come and they run into you, you notice. And you probably go flying. Makes for good football players. So density, I got sidetracked there. Dens density is a fundamental property of a substance. So you know, a piece of wood has a particular density. Um, different elements have different densities. Different, different compounds have different densities. Water has a density of one gram per milliliter. And that, in fact, we can identify things based on their densities. It's an intrinsic property. You cut it in half, like I mentioned before, the density doesn't change. So we're going to do calculations with density because that's what this chapter is about. So calculating the density of something is pretty straightforward. We use the equation. So here's an example. A sample of liquid has a volume of 22.5 milliliters and a mass of 27.2 grams. Calculate the density. This problem is a little different than the ones we've been doing because we've been doing dimensional analysis and unit conversions. This is not a dimensional analysis problem. This is the other kind involving an equation and that word, algebra. So we still want to read the question and pick out the numbers. It can be helpful to pull those, especially if you're 
doing this off the computer or out of a book where you can't really just circle it like I'm circling it, write it down. Okay, 22.5 milliliters, 27.2 grams. And sometimes, like in this question, they actually identify it for you. A volume of. Ooh, okay, so V for volume, that's the volume. And a mass of. So this is the mass. They actually told us in the problem. But when we pull it out and write it like this, we get rid of all those pesky words that are distracting, and we can see what we've got. What if they didn't tell us what the, the, was the mass? We can look at the unit. The unit gram measures mass. Kilogram, milligram, microgram, anything with gram in it, that's mass. Liter, uh, up here, liter. Milliliter, microliter, kiloliter, megaliter, liters measure volume. So that would also identify it. So we're calculating the density. The density is the mass divided by the volume. That's an equation that you need to memorize. So we're going to plug the numbers into the equation. We're going to put the mass where the M is, write the unit. We're going to put the volume down here where the V is, we're going to write the unit. Then we get out our calculator. What did I do wrong? Yeah, I wrote the same number on the top and the bottom. It happens. So the volume is supposed to be 22.5. Easy, easy mistakes copying numbers down wrong. 27.2 divided by 22.5. Now, my calculator is giving me a lot of numbers. So I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut and ask myself, how many significant figures should my answer have? It should have three. So I'm just going to write down two or three beyond that instead of everything. So I know I want one, two, zero, and I'm going to write down three more, eight, eight, eight. What are the units here? Grams per milliliter. Grams per mm -hmm. milliliter. Those don't cancel out. Three significant figures, the one, the two, the zero. So I'm going to round that to 1.21 grams per milliliter. Vertical fractions when you're writing by hand are better. That is the same though as 1.21 grams per milliliter. Any questions? These sorts of problems are usually pretty straightforward. So here's an example of how the solution map looks for this, and this is different. So we're given two pieces of information here. We end up having to use both of them, and we're, we're calculating the density. But instead of a conversion factor here, we have an equation. So there's two general kinds of problems that we do. There's ones where it's dimensional analysis, it's converting units. And the other kind, there's an equation involved. This is that other kind. Some div density problems, though, we can do as if they were unit conversion problems. We can't do it if we're calculating the density. But if they give us the density and ask us to calculate one of the other things, we can do this as a um, dimensional analysis problem. So for a liquid substance with a density of 1.32 grams per cubic centimeter, what volume should be measured to deliver a mass of 68.4 grams? So we're going to identify the numbers in here. We're given that number with its unit and this number with its unit. And the question is, what volume? 
So I've got two things here. I've got 1.32 grams per cubic centimeter. That's a really ugly three. Write it as a vertical fraction so that you can see there's a numerator and a denominator. This is a fraction. The other number is 68.4 grams. One of those is our starting number. The one with the per in it, the one with the fraction, the density is a conversion factor. It gives us the relationship between grams and cubic centimeters for this particular liquid substance. Just like the uh, 1,056 feet per lap was a conversion factor. That's the conversion factor. We're going to start with this guy. So our path, we're starting with grams, and we want to end up with volume. Does it say what unit we have to use for volume? doesn't say, does it? We can use any volume unit we want. Well, what's the volume unit in that conversion factor? It's cubic centimeters. So that would be easy, wouldn't it? So we're going to just go grams to cubic centimeters. So we'll start with grams, 68.4 grams. We've got one step. We're going to go grams to cubic centimeters. And then the unit gram goes down here because we want the unit to cancel out. Everybody with me? Now we find the number, 1.32. It's 1.32 grams per 1 cubic centimeter. So it's 1 cubic centimeter and 1.32 grams. Pardon me? I got this from the problem right here. They gave it to us. See that? So it's, it's given to you. Um, you won't have to memorize densities. If you need a density, there will either be a table provided for you on an exam or it will be given in the problem. In the homework, you might have to go look it up. So then we get 68.4 divided by 1.32 equals. And again, I'm going to save myself the trouble of writing down all of those digits and say, how many significant figures should my answer have? Three. So I'm going to write down maybe six, just to, to be safe when I go to round eight, one, Eight, one. The units there are going to be cubic centimeters. And I need three sig figs, so now I'm going to round it 51.8. And that's the answer. You certainly can write down all the digits that your calculator gives you and then figure out the number of significant figures. But what I'm trying to show you here is that you can, you can kind of look ahead and say, well, I don't need all of them. Let's write down a couple extras so that I don't worry that I've made a mistake in rounding. Write down, you know, a bunch of them and then round it off to the final answer. Any questions? You're getting 4.9. You're getting 4.9? Let me try this again. 68.4 divided by 1.32. I get 51.8181. So what I do when a student comes and says, here's my work, and I'm, well, you know, why is my answer wrong? I'll check the calculation that it's actually, you know, when you punch it through in the calculator, it comes out to be that. And I also check, did we, did we copy down the numbers correctly? So here it's 68.4 that I've got. I can't see what I'm pointing at. Ah, I'm lost. Where is it? There it is. 68.4. Same number. And this is 1.32, and then I've got 1.32. Did it come out yet? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah.
Very easy to do. Very easy to do. Copy a number down. Transposing digits. Okay. Very easy to do stuff like that. Any other questions? Let's, um, so here's an example of a, a table of densities that's in your textbook. You may need to refer to that when you do the homework. Um, densities like this can also be found on the internet in all kinds of different places. So let's do a couple more examples. A drop of acetone, nail polish remover, has a mass of 53, I'm oh, sorry, 53, 35. 35 milligrams, a density of 0 0.788 grams per cubic centimeter. What is its volume in cubic centimeters? Okay, so we read the problem, and then let's go through and identify the numbers. 35 milligrams, 0.788. Got bumped onto the next line. Grams per cubic centimeter. Oh, excuse me. What is its volume in cubic centimeters? So we can see that we're trying to end up with cubic centimeters. I'm going to take these other numbers and write them down over here on the side. 35 milligrams, 0 0.788 grams per cubic centimeters. Writing it vertically helps you to see that it's a fraction. Otherwise, a lot of students will overlook that it's actually a fraction. And then all kinds of weird things happen with the units, and the answers end up wrong. So even not really thinking about it being a density problem or anything, but just thinking about dimensional analysis, what have we learned about choosing which of these numbers to start with? Should we start with the 35 or the 0.788? What do the units tell us to do? We should start with the 35. This has a single unit, milligrams. This has something per something. We'll probably need that as a conversion factor. So we're starting with milligrams, and we need to get to cubic centimeters. Will that conversion factor, grams per cubic centimeters, get us directly from milligrams to cubic centimeters? No. Mm, maybe we need to work backwards. So if we had grams, we could use grams per cubic centimeters to do that conversion, right? Can we convert milligrams to grams? Yes, we can. So this is going to need two steps. Milligrams to grams, and then we'll use the density to convert to cubic centimeters. 35 milligrams times two fractions. Milligrams to grams to cubic centimeters. Milligrams to grams to cubic centimeters. Previous unit comes into the denominator so that we can cancel them out. The units tell us what to do. Then we put in the numbers. 0 0.788. Over here, the 0.788 and the grams are together, and cubic centimeters is on the bottom. Okay, if we put a number on the bottom, what would we put? We'd put a 1 there. Every cubic centimeter weighs 0 0.788 grams. So over here, 1 cubic centimeter, 0 0.788. Eight eight grams. What about milligrams to grams? Well, this is where you need that piece from the memorization quiz. What does milli mean? So milli, in terms of 10 to the what? It's 10 to the negative 3. So if I have 
a gram, a gram is equal to a gram, right? And milli equals or means 10 to the minus 3. That's how it multiplies a unit. So if I put milli on one side and put what it means on the other side, those two things are still equal. A milligram is 10 to the minus third grams, one one thousandth of a gram. Does that make sense? So when you see metric conversions like this guy right here, milli is on the bottom, write the numerical meaning on top using the 10 to the x things that I've asked you to memorize. So milli on the bottom, 10 to the minus 3 on the top. If you learn that milli is 10 to the minus 3 and you follow this pattern, you'll get this conversion factor right every single time. You never put 10 to the minus 3 with milli. There are other ways to write these, and if you're comfortable with that and you're doing it fine, I'm not going to force you to do it this way, but this is the only one I'm going to teach because I don't want to confuse people that are just figuring this out. How do you enter 10 to the minus 3 on your calculator? Well, let's write it like it was in scientific notation. 1 times 10 to the minus 3. Oh, that looks more friendly. 1 EE e minus 3. So, 35 times 1 EE e minus 3 divided by 0.788 equals. And again, I'm getting a mess. How many significant figures will my answer have? Two. So I'm going to write down the first two and then maybe three more. And this is going to have a unit of cubic centimeters. So I'm, my calculator says 0 0.04441624. But I don't really need to write down all of it. Now I'm going to round to two significant figures. That would be the second four, 0 0.044 cubic centimeters. Any questions? If you wrote this in scientific notation, it would be 4.4 .4 times 10 to the minus 2. Yeah. And that would be absolutely fine. Okay. Absolutely fine. So, for this class, about the only time you have things that are graded, that are handwritten, is in lab. So, either of those answers on a lab report would be absolutely perfect. On an exam, I give multiple choice exams. It's possible that either of those could show up as the correct answer. They wouldn't both show up. Any other questions? Here's another example. A pure gold metal bar displaces 0 0.82 liters of water. What is its mass? in kilograms. And to save us looking up in that table, it says the density of gold is 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter. So here we have a number, 0.82 liters. The question is, what is its mass? We're looking for kilograms. And then we've got this number over here. So we've got 0 0.82 liters. We have 19.3 grams over cubic centimeters. Two different numbers that showed up in that problem. The units tell us we should probably start with this one. The other one's going to get thrown in as a unit conversion. We're trying to end up with kilograms. What is its mass in kilograms? 
And so we've decided that we're going to start with leaders. So we've got liters. We're trying to get from liters to kilograms. And we think we probably have to use the density. And that has grams and cubic centimeters. And great, none of the units are matching up. But is kilogram related to gram? It is. So if we had grams, we could get to kilograms. Now, gram, gram is in the, uh, you can't see what I'm pointing at, is in this density, right? Grams per cubic centimeter. The density allows us to convert between grams and cubic centimeters. So if we had cubic centimeters, we could do that, right? Now, what the heck is the relationship between cubic centimeters and liters? They're both units of volume, aren't they? Here's a little tidbit that we often forget. One milliliter is exactly the same as one cubic centimeter. Again, I'm going to do this one a little different than I did it this morning. So, could we go liters to milliliters to cubic centimeters? Yeah, because liters to milliliters, we just have to do that prefix thing. And then a milliliter is the same as a cubic centimeter. That's one of those little things that we often forget. And so you're doing this conversion, and you're like, but there's a piece missing. Yeah, it's stuck on the end of your nose, and it's too close, and you can't see it. You're like, oh, it's too easy. Yeah, that one is easy, but we forget it. Okay, so a milliliter and a cubic centimeter are different names for exactly the same thing. Okay, so here we have our path. It's kind of long. Liters to milliliters to cubic centimeters to grams to kilograms. We can do that. I'm going to start down lower here because I'm going to need the whole width. So 0 0.82 liters. I've got one, two, three, four. I need four fractions in there. One, two, three, four. Liters to milliliters to cubic centimeters to grams to kilograms. In something like this where you can, you know, some of you are really good at not writing stuff down. The bare minimum I think that you absolutely should write down is the equation that I'm working on right now. In one like this where it's a little more complicated, I think it's really a good idea to write the path down. Just a little note to yourself. This is where I'm going, and that'll keep you from getting lost. So liters to milliliters to cubic centimeters to grams to kilograms. We figured out the path, and we're just putting that string of units on the numerators of the fractions, the tops. The bottom comes from the previous unit. We're just going to, it's kind of a zigzaggy thing, so that they cancel out. We want to cancel out liters. We want to cancel out milliliters. We want to cancel out cubic centimeters. We want to cancel out grams. You see how that pattern's working? All the units in place and make sure that they're canceling out the way they're supposed to, not just how you want them to, and then put numbers in. The order that you do it doesn't matter. Start with the easy one. And which one is easiest depends on how your brain is working that day. I'm looking at that and thinking a milliliter equals a cent cubic centimeter. Well, that one's going to be easy. That's just going to be 1 over 1, right? Okay, so I got that one taken care of. Um, that density, that's going to show up right here, the grams and the cubic centimeters. The beauty of doing this is we don't have to remember, are we supposed to multiply by the density or do we need to divide by the density? We're just going to put it in how the units tell us. This, we want grams on top and the 
goes with the grams. 19.3 grams per one cubic centimeter. You don't have to write the one there, but if you'd like a number down there, it would be a one. The first one and the last one are just metric prefix conversions. We just did milli, so that's fresh in our mind. Here we've got milli on top. We want to put 10 to the minus 3 on the bottom. 10 to the minus 3, because that's what milli means. So we've got milli on top, milliliter, and 10 to the minus 3 liters on the bottom. And if, if you need to put the one times in there to make it a little more friendly, go ahead and do that. What does kilo mean? 10 to the plus 3. So kilos on top, so I'm going to write 10 to the plus 3 on the bottom. If you memorize the metric prefixes, kilo is 10 to the 3, mega is 10 to the 6, centi is 10 to the minus 2 then you never ever put the number with the prefix. They are always on opposite sides of the equal sign or the fraction line. So there, we have it all set up. Now we get the cal calculator up. Go left to right and take those fractions top to bottom. I'm like, but there aren't some there aren't any numbers on the tops there. Well if you want a number it would be one kilogram and it would be one milliliter. So 0.82 divided by 1 EE minus 3 times 1 divided by 1 times 19.3 divided by 1 EE 3 equals. And I'm coming up with 15.826. And the unit will be kilograms. How many significant figures? Two. two. The initial number, 0.82, had only two significant figures. This metric conversion's exact, this one's exact, and the last one's exact. The density has three. The initial number being two has fewer. And so we're going to round this off and say this is 16 kilograms. Any questions? This is not the only way to solve this problem. You can use the density equation and algebra and rearrange the equation. You're still going to have some unit conversions to throw in there. And um, if you like algebra, I think you probably have no problem figuring out how to do it that way on your own. But I'm teaching more to the students that are just maybe having a little harder time, and I think this is a better approach. We're, we're taking this dimensional analysis idea, and we're just using it whenever we can. Because once you understand it, it works so well and works for so many things. We have one more example here. A gold-colored pebble is found in a stream. And of course... The question we're wondering is, is it gold? Is it real gold? Its mass is 23.2 milligrams, and its volume is 1.2 cubic millimeters. Let's find out what the density is in grams per cubic centimeter, and then we can compare it to the density of gold. If this pebble is gold, it should have the same density as gold. Or really close, because sometimes, you know, when we measure stuff, we have little mistakes. But, you know, so if it comes out to be 19.5, yeah, it's probably gold. If it comes out to be 5 grams per cubic centimeter, no, that's not gold. Gold is really, really heavy for its volume. It's very dense. And in a lot of movies, they forget to account for that because what they're carrying around in the sack is bricks that are spray-painted gold. Yeah, they look like gold, but the actors forget to act like those are heavier than they are. You'd be hard-pressed to be able to pick up a sack of bricks that are made out of pure gold because gold is crazy heavy. Anyway, 
This is how you can figure out if something is gold or not. Find its density. Okay, so the question is, what is its density? I forgot to tell it I want to write. Okay, there we go. What is its density? When the question is, what's the density, we have to use the density equation. We can't really do our dimensional analysis set up on this one. So what's the density? Well, we say, well, what is density? Density is mass divided by volume. What are the numbers we're being given here? We've got 23.2 milligrams and 1.20 cubic millimeters. So let's write these down. Those are, that's my kids calling me. I'll call them back in a few minutes. They're just calling to say they got home from school. 23.2 milligrams. That's the mass, right? Because the unit is milligram. And also because it says its mass is. So that's the mass. Mass equals. And its volume is, so 120, no, copied that wrong. 1.20, write down the units, cubic millimeters. That's the volume. Now, is this one going to be as straightforward as that first one that we did? What, what's it asking? The density in grams per cubic centimeters. If we take milligrams and divide by cubic millimeters, are we going to end up with grams per cubic centimeter? No, we aren't. We're going to have to convert some units. We can convert units first, or we can convert them later. Let's do it first. So we're looking ahead, and we're seeing we need to have our density in grams per cubic centimeter. I'll just write centimeter over there. Grams per cubic centimeter. So that means we want the mass in grams and the volume in cubic centimeters, right? Mm -hmm. So let's convert these guys over here. I am going to move this one down because he's in the way. I'm going to put him down a little lower so I wasn't thinking ahead. So can we convert milligrams to grams? Yeah. So we can go milligrams to grams. That's our little path. So we put grams here and milligrams down there. Then we say, what does milli mean? Oh yeah, 10 to the minus third. 10 to the minus third, or 1 times 10 to the minus third. So get out our calculators. This can be done in your head, but if that doesn't make sense to you, use your calculator. So this is 0 0.0232 grams. So the milligrams canceled out. That makes sense? It is 2.32 times 10 to the minus 2 in scientific notation. And then I also need to convert cubic millimeters into cubic centimeters. Do you know what the relationship is between millimeters and centimeters? Ten. There's ten millimeters in a centimeter. Well, let's pretend we didn't know that. Hmm. Anytime we're converting, I'm going to move up to the top of the screen here. So we need to do millimeters, and we need to end up with centimeters. And we're going to cube those, and we'll deal with that. This unit has a prefix. 
and this unit has a prefix. Two prefixes. That tells us we should do this as two steps. You don't have to, but you can just follow the pattern that way and it'll work out really nice. Two prefixes, two steps. The other ones we've done, milligrams to grams, grams to kilograms, only one has a prefix. So here what we need to do is go millimeters 